The most abundant nut in Londonderry is the hazelnut, or the American filbert. One discovers its bushes growing in any clearing, a dense thicket. The catkin blossoms appear in the autumn. Come summer, its nuts grow in clusters, the burr of which is opened by the first frost, releasing a solid nut in each shell. While the witch hazel has a similar name, it is not related to the hazelnut. In fact, it is not a nut at all. After most of the colored leaves have fallen in the autumn, the witch hazel can be discovered flaunting its yellow blooms. To establish a new plant, its seeds are shot like projectiles by the warmth of the next summer's sun. A colorful tree is the basswood. Its large, heart-shaped leaves cast a dense shade below. Its seeds stand out like wings against the autumn sky. Londonderry has two native maples, the red and the yellow, depending on their autumn foliage. However, each may attain a degree of mottled coloring in the fall. The red maple also is distinguished by its red buds in the springtime. The tallest deciduous tree native to Londonderry is the American elm. Its vasiform shape is very different from all others. The tamarack, or American larch, is the only conifer whose needles turn yellow and drop off each year. A golden group filling a small swamp is a delight to behold. Its cones grow abruptly from the sides of its branches. The forest is the home of many songbirds. From earliest spring to late fall, their voices may be heard. A few, like the fearless, friendly chickadee, is a year-round resident, as is the goldfinch. The male robin is distinguished by its orange breast. It hops to attract worms, which think they hear raindrops and so come to the surface, where the robin can pull and eat them. The blue jay, a larger bird, is a jaunty fellow. Its crest rises and falls continuously as the bird moves agitatedly. Even shyer is the rose-breasted grosbeak. Probably Londonderry's favorite songbird is the bluebird. It is a casual housekeeper but a fearless defender of its young. Throughout the summer, the peaceful cooing of the morning dove may be heard. Its iridescent plumage changes with the light. A young tui rests upon the ground. Later, its coloring will become a startling black with rust red sides. The crow, our native scavenger, is a stately black bird, which spooks easily. <coughs> Sparrows are small brown birds, each varying slightly from the other. There's the song sparrow, the fox sparrow, the white throat, the chipping sparrow, and so on. We often see them in flocks, stopping in Londonderry during the migration periods of spring and fall. Striping and mottling camouflages them well among the weeds and grasses as they pick seeds and insects from the ground. When the forest is opened by fire or cutting, a unique sequence occurs in nature. With the exposure to sunlight comes a profusion of fireweed in the area. Also, there is the sudden appearance of thorny brambled vines this results in an increase in the number of birds and animals which thrive on them. The running blackberry is abundant in Londonderry. An amusing saying, but true, is blackberries are red when they're green, meaning immature, of course. Like the blackberry is the thimbleberry, or black raspberry. Its brambles make the thorny briar patch of Peter Rabbit. 
Wild strawberry blossoms carpet the ground before the berries ripen in June. Blueberries come in three kinds. High, which grow in swamps. Half high and low, which cover the ground. Similar, but with a drier taste and a larger seed, is the huckleberry. Foxes thrive on all these low varieties. The largest single berry grows on a shrub or an understory tree. It's known as the sugar plum, also known as the shad blow, because in the spring it blossoms or blows at the time that the shad are running. The shad, a medium-sized fish, runs in great numbers up the rivers to spawn in the quiet waters of the lakes or ponds. Londonderry has many varieties of shad blow, and their sugary taste accounts for the name sugar plum. Checkerberries, also known as wintergreen, are a ground cover. The leaves stay on under the snow. Both berries and leaves are edible, the new leaves being called chink. When conditions are ideal, the red berries hang heavy under the leaves. Partridge berries, or fox berries, another ground cover, remain green as well. The sunset sky forecasts tomorrow's weather. When the heavy snows of winter come, there are few birds remaining in the area. Nature is held in an icy grip. The pale moon shines through the leafless trees, and the hooting of the barred owl chills the blood of small creatures, listening, snuggled in their heavy fur coats. The program which you have just witnessed is offered as a close look at the charm and beauty of Londonderry's natural history, which we can all still examine for ourselves. It includes my selection of details, which are related to the developments in our history. These will be used again briefly as they pertain to particular periods in the upcoming segments of discovering the history of Londonderry.